make you dream, dare, and do. And people, they have dreams. Uh, when I'm in Malawi, those kids have dreams. In Istanbul, everybody dreams. But in the end, dreams don't come true. And the thing is, why? Uh, as you see, do we have a free will? Do we do what we do with a free will? Or are there things which impede that we achieve what we'd like? And if you look, it's normally all about fear and disgust. But I think that's a mal interpretation. Yep. Fear is something which protects us, and disgust does the same thing. And if you kids look at yourself and you think, wow, why am I so afraid of things? Then you really have to think about a very simple thing, and, this, and that you have a defense system, an immune system. And that immune system protects you against all kinds of bugs. And those bugs, if you would not be protected, uh, then you would be ill all the time. Uh, when you're not afraid, you would cross a, a street, and by crossing the street, you would not look to any car passing by, and it would hit you. So it is about mal interpretation of the word fear. And bugs, they do influence us. Uh, look to the toxoplasmosis, which is a, a bug uh, which normally is translated by a cat. And then a cat, if he f has toxoplasmosis, he starts to like you. And the same holds for human beings. A toxoplasmosis make people after a year much more sexual attractive. And that's very weird. Uh, but it's about disgust and fear. And everybody thinks that disgust and fear is something bad. But would you really like to eat this? I don't think so. Although uh, this investigation is done with a brownie. This is a brownie. Yeah? It's chocolate. But still, your immune system would not allow you to eat it. So don't be afraid of fearness, because it has protected human beings for millions and millions and millions of years. The only thing is, what we should do is use fear and disgust in our benefit, and not using the deleterious part of fairness and disgust. And because it is also true that parasites, that hygiene, that a dirty world produces, as you see here, dictatorship. Uh, North Korea is one of the most dirtiest countries in the whole world, with the, one of the most severe di dictatorships. And Norway is one of the cleanest mm, countries in the world. And this country has one of the most stable democracies in the world. So it's true, bugs, parasites, they produce all kinds of behavior. It produces fear, but it produces also religion. And it's very interesting to see that uh, the more bugs, the more parasites and microbes in a society, the more sectorism and the more fanatic religious people. And the same holds for family ties. Uh, you see that in very, very tight families, they live in in, 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 in societies which are not completely clean. But we don't have this problem in Holland. Uh, the, the majority of you kids, uh, you live in a very clean environment, and you might be afraid of the future. But the future is one big opportunity. The only thing is, if you want to achieve what you've dreamed of, then there is one thing you have to overcome, and that is an immune system dom dominating your free will. And the immune system is capable of dominating your free will. You saw uh, that a bug can even produce sexual attractivity difference. So if the immune system pulls to your energy sources, then the brain loses its free will. And then, and then we forget that fearness is to protect us against swimming with sharks and by crossing a street without looking. But it also precedes disease. Uh, every chronic disease is preceded by a chronic 
fear feeling, which is probably only produced by your immune system. And that's why it's so interesting that if you look at food intake, if you look at exercise, and if you look at bonding, and your parents protecting your back, then you don't need to suffer from neophobia. And neophobia is fearness for new things. And my kids, they don't eat anything I haven't eaten, like Caesar and Napoleon. Do you remember that uh, in history? You know that Napoleon had a taster with him because uh, the taster first tasted the food and if the taster didn't die, then Napoleon did eat the same food. My kids do the same thing. And we, when we eat broccoli, they first look at me if I'm going to eat the broccoli. And after 10 times broccoli eating, they eat the broccoli. But before, they won't. And that's about neophobia. And neophobia is something in your brain, and it is something completely protective. But there will be a moment in your life that you have to overcome this fearness because otherwise you won't dare. And one of the very interesting things is that if you increase the magnesium level in your blood, yeah, then you see that that magnesium reaches your brain and then something happens which is almost a miracle. Then you overcome things like fearness. And that's in food, like avocado, uh, like in spinach, and with those nutrients, we can really make dreams come true. And in the end, we talk about something which is called dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter responsible for future thinking. Yep. And that's the next step in your life. Uh, you're now small and not so old yet, and you're dreaming. But are you going to dare and are you going to do that's about th this neurotransmitter, which is dopamine. Another transmitter is serotonin. You know serotonin. When you walk in, in The Hague, in the center of the, of the city, you see all kinds of people depressed, walking like this. This is the serotonergic, a fearness-focused neurotransmission. But you can also have a so-called stargazer personality looking to heaven, looking to the future. And that's about something which is called dopamine anatomy. And that dopamine anatomy develops when you're bonded, when your parents stand behind you, when they protect your back, and when you feel really safe and secure. Yeah. And then you dare. Then you take the next step. Uh, and you see, I have a dream, I want to be a pilot. I want to be a doctor, or I want to be a plumber, or I want to be whatever you want, a football player. But the only thing to make that come true, you have to look upwards and into the future, into the horizon. And that makes people so different. And we are really different. We are, have a real future thinking mind. And these are the future thinkers. Einstein, yeah, Napoleon, Nelson Mandela, Columbus, uh, but also Margaret Thatcher, Indira Gandhi, Golda Meir, and George Hume, which is a famous, famous economist. And they all have one thing in common. They had a purpose in life. But at the same time, they were a little bit crazy. And that's a good thing, being a little bit crazy. Because people, they don't like to, to be changed. But you, you could change yourself. And for that, I would like to, to tell you a small story about my kids. And my two best clients, Marcella, yesterday asked me, what do we have for dessert? And Margaret said the same thing. And I said, an apple or a banana. And after 10 times saying we want an ice cream, now I, I still said, an apple and a, or a banana. And then they said, okay, just give me a grape. Thank you very much.